So here we will quickly go through how you can take an existing kernel on Kaggle and make modifications to it. For this, we will take the Introduction to Contest QBI 2017, which can be found on the course website under the tutorial. So if you go here, Tutorial Python Notebook and Scikit, and then click on the Digit Recognizer setup, this will take you to that contest. You now have this open, and if the notebook belongs to you, you'll see an option to edit notebook. If it doesn't belong to you, then you can fork the notebook. And so this fork means that you make your own copy of it that you can then edit or do whatever you want with. And so we can go down here and we can see the notebook that we have. And for the this example, what we will do is we'll try to switch the classifier so it doesn't use mean squared error. We'll try to change it so that it uses mean absolute error. And so what we do is go here and click fork notebook. This then makes a new copy. And so we can call this copy now MAE, because that's mean absolute error. We can then run the functions again. So we set up the data. We now load in all of the rows from the training data. We show what the input data looks like. And to run these, you can click inside the cell and use Shift Enter or just click the Run Execute Cell button. If the previous cells aren't finished running, then it will simply add the executing cell to the queue of things to run. And so you see this little star, and that means it's in progress or it's waiting for a previous one to finish before it can get started. So you'll notice now all of these are done. We can now show the first digit, which is a one, slightly slanted. We can now then get a classifier which has examples of all of the digits. So we see here, it now has an example. This makes a figure of all of those digits. We can now see the example digits that we're using for this. We will now change the MSE to the MAE function, which means that instead of using the power, we'll just use absolute value and then we can get rid of this too. We then copy MAE here so that it calculates the MAE as part of the classify images function. We can then change this text just so that it's correct. We can now run it again on all of the digits. And that we see for this one, it gets the right score. It doesn't work perfectly. We can then rerun this block many times because each time we run it, it picks a new digit. And so here it guessed four when the actual result was six. So not completely perfect, but better. We can now run the code here where it will then go through all of the, it will load in all of the test data, so the validation data here. And then we can use this code to apply our classify image function to all of those points. We can then save this result here using this command, which we'll be able to submit afterwards. So we now see we've classified 28,000 images. It's now done running. We can then click the publish button to make this new copy of our notebook. The publish button then clears all the results and re-executes all of the code to make sure that it still works. Once this is finished running, we will be able to take the submission or take the results and submit it to the um, leaderboard to see how well we place. This is still a very basic algorithm and so we don't expect it to do massively better, but maybe choosing this different error function will give us slightly different results.
for me now. This can take a while because it has to rerun all of the code again. We now see that it's done. We have our new notebook. We can then go to output and we can just click the submit to competition button. This will then take our results and submit it to the competition. And our results last time were 0.345. So about 34.5% correct. We now should be able to scroll down and see that we're about the same score as we were last time. Um, so we'll need to come up with a much better metric when we want to improve, but that we still get 34% correct, which is not bad. All of our kernel is automatically saved online. You can then choose to go back. If we go back here, to save this kernel or save this notebook um, locally on our computer. And so if you click um, here, you can click download code and then it will give you an actual IPython notebook that you can then run on your own computer and should work well. You'll probably have to adjust the paths, but the basic idea is fixed.